At the beginning of the movie, we are introduced to a man named Zach Hobson, who has just woken up from his sleep in an inn. That morning, Zach turned on the radio, but there was no news or morning music that usually accompanied his day. He then called the receptionist at the inn to ask for breakfast, but no one answered his call at that time. Zach decided to go out in his car and stopped at a place to refuel, but the place he went to that morning seemed to have been abandoned by the owner. Zach then looked around and still didn't find a single person other than the boiling water in the electric pot that was almost dry in the locked toilet. Zach continued his journey along the very quiet streets. He also deliberately made a commotion by honking his car. But still, no one came to reprimand him. He also stopped at a house to look around hoping to find someone. But the house he came to was also empty, as if everyone in the whole city disappeared somewhere. While he was driving on the highway to look for anyone he could find, Zach almost crashed into a truck that had also been abandoned by the owner in the middle of the road. In the truck, Zach tried to contact someone via radio but his efforts were also in vain. Zach then continued his journey and saw that the situation in the city was very quiet, without anyone left except him. All Zach could see was empty vehicles that had been abandoned by their owners in the state of the city at that time. It was like a dead city. Not long ago, Zach found the wreckage of a building that had been destroyed, which seemed to have just collided with a plane. But when Zach looked closely, there were no signs of life or bodies of victims around the wreckage of the destroyed plane. Zach also continued his journey by going to where he worked, which was engaged in the energy sector. While at work, it seemed that the situation was very quiet, and Zach did not even see a single employee. Zach then opened his computer to contact other companies around the world, hoping to get a clue about what had happened, but no one responded or even replied to the message he sent. Not long after, Zach got a message containing a project called Flashlight that was successfully done. After seeing the message, Zach went straight to the control room and saw his co-worker dead with his eyes bulging and his body burning. Shortly, Zach heard an announcement saying that a dangerous substance from radiation in the laboratory would soon spread. Hearing this, Zach immediately ran to the elevator, but unfortunately he was too late. Zach then devised a plan to get out of his office by looking for some gas cylinders. While looking for shelter from the explosion that was about to occur, Zach accidentally found a recording from someone containing information about the flashlight project carried out by his company had failed. Zach then recorded a message and said that he might be the only person left alive on the surface of the Earth. After the project flashlight that was tested by his company failed and caused a phenomenon called the effect, which appeared from the sun, Zach was lucky to survive, where the next day he went to a radio station where Zach took the initiative to send a message by including his name, address, and telephone number, hoping that someone would hear and be able to contact him immediately. Not only that, Zack even wrote his name, address, and phone number on a billboard, but during his wait, not a single person contacted him. Then Zack continued his plan by driving a police car and calling everyone to gather using a loudspeaker, but still no one listened or even came to gather according to his expectations. Day after day passed, Zack continued to wait for someone to contact him. Knowing that everyone had mysteriously disappeared, Zack decided to find a more decent place to live to continue his life. Then the next morning, Zach woke up in a luxurious house, and that morning Zach drank champagne and cooked eggs for breakfast. Zach then decided to have fun enjoying his solitude, starting from shopping for luxury goods as much as he wanted, which of course he did not have to pay anything because now he was free to do whatever he wanted. Then when Zach returned home, he tried to wear women's clothes while watching a TV show about conspiracy theories. Zach, who suddenly felt annoyed, shot the TV screen on the spot. Now Zack began to lose his mind, starting from cutting out some pictures of world leaders that he put on his front yard. He then stood proudly on the upper balcony and pretended to be the president or the greatest leader who had ever existed on earth. The next morning Zack decided to walk around wearing only a piece of women's clothing that he wore last night. Now Zack had completely lost his mind where he had considered himself a god, and was desperate to try to end his own life using the gun he was holding, but Zack abandoned his intention and decided to continue the day by swimming at the beach alone. Then after cleaning his dirty body, Zack brought a portable electric generator to his house to turn on the electricity that had died and collect some seed supplies for gardening. Since that day, Zack decided to continue his life and accept everything that had happened. 
One day while cleaning, Zack had heard someone's voice, but he thought the voice was just his hallucination. But suddenly he heard the same voice again. And when Zack turned his body, he saw a beautiful woman standing holding a gun pointed at him. The woman's name was Joanne. She told him that what he saw was real, and to make sure the two of them hugged each other and made Zack's heart very happy after knowing that there were still other people living on the surface of the earth. The two of them then sat down and started talking about what really happened to the world. Whether the disappearance of everyone has something to do with the effect caused by the failure of the flashlight, or even they might be dead. Then the next morning they decided to drive around in a small truck while talking about themselves. But in the middle of the trip, they found the bodies of a man and woman who had died in a dry state. Because it was getting dark, Zack and Joanne decided to rest and spend the night at a motel. That night, while Zack was cooking dinner, they got back to talking about the possibility that there were still other people living out there. In addition, Zack also explained about Project Flashlight, which is an alternative artificial energy that can provide considerable electrical power. But if the project fails, the effect will make the sun emit energy that can make all living things disappear. Then the next morning they both went back around to continue the search, where Joanne went to the hospital and city center, while Zack went to a place to find information about changes in weather and the structure of the universe which suddenly changed and became more unstable. Zack, who was about to meet Joanne again, was blocked by several trucks that blocked his way. Feeling annoyed, Zack decided to look around and surprisingly a man suddenly appeared and immediately held Zack with his gun. A panicked Zack told the man holding him at the time to let him go because he was alone and not dangerous at all. But suddenly Joanne contacted him over the radio, making the man named Appy realize that Zack had lied to him. They then went together to meet Joanne somewhere, and shortly after, Zack met Joanne again, while Appy, who had been hiding behind, then showed himself. That's when Appy realized that Zack and Joanne were no threat to him. The three of them hugged each other and were grateful that there were still other people alive. The next morning, Zack returns to observe the sun and the universe, which he thinks has changed. After a while observing the sun, Zack predicts that soon something will happen from the sun. He then tries to explain what he has discovered about the sun to Joanne and Appy and invites them to go north immediately. But unfortunately, there was an argument between the three of them due to a misunderstanding. In the middle of the argument, Zack told Appy and Joanne that he regretted not immediately stopping the flashlight project, which was one of the causes of the disappearance of mankind. After reconciling, they returned to Zack's house to look and search for data on the computer. Suddenly, something happened according to Zack's previous prediction, which had made Joanne unable to find Zack or Appy, who suddenly disappeared. Fortunately, not long after, everything returned to normal. So that the same thing does not happen again, AP has a plan to destroy the source of the flashlight project, namely the company where Zack works, so that the effect of the failure of the flashlight project can stop the sun from releasing cosmic energy, which could make those who remain also disappear. Before carrying out the plan, Zack had explained that everything that happened actually had nothing to do with Project Flashlight from his company, but only a natural phenomenon that came from the sun and might be the cause of all living things in the world disappearing. But even so, they have to keep trying because by destroying the source of Project Flashlight, the three of them might survive. But unbeknownst to Joanne and Appy, Zack sacrifices himself by blowing up a truck filled with dynamite to destroy his company along with himself. At the end of the movie, Zack is seen waking up on a beach with a view of strangely shaped clouds and a ringed planet like the planet Saturn. And the movie ends. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, because by subscribing you have supported me to make better videos. See you in the next video.